verse number 12. A very familiar verse that all of you know. And then, I should turn there. I also would like you to turn your Bibles to the book of Romans. chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 14 to 17. John 1, 12 says, For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We can Tagalog po ang sino mang nagsitanggap sa Kanya kay Kristo ay binigyan ng karapatang maging mga anak ng Diyos. Ang mga taong sumampalataya sa Kanyang pangalan. In Romans chapter 8, beginning verse number 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word today. I pray, Lord, now that you be the one to bless your word, that everyone would understand it, Lord, to our edification. We might be built up in the faith. And for those, dear God, that do not know Christ yet as their Savior, they would come to know Christ today and really be saved. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What does it mean to be a child of God? That is what I will be uh, preaching to you today. What does it mean to be a child of God? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng maging anak ng Diyos? sa inyo at sa akin. Kung kayo ay nakaranas ng kaligtasan at alam mo na ikaw ay ligtas at kanyang anak, ano po bang ibig sabihin sa inyo nun? Meron po bang pagkakaiba ang talagang pagiging anak sa hindi anak? Meron ba? Ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Kung walang ibig sabihin yon sa mga buhay natin at tayo nabubuhay sa mundong ito na pare-pareho lang tayong lahat sa lahat ng mga tao sa mundo, abay wala pa lang kwentang maniwala sa Diyos. Tama ba ako? Wala akong kwentang maniwala sa Diyos. Sapagkat wala naman pa ng pagkakaiba ang tao na nakakakilala sa ating Panginoon. Malaki ang pagkakaiba. Malaki ang pagkakaiba ng attitude Malaki ang pagkakaiba ng pag-asa. Malaki ang pagkakaiba ng direksyon ng buhay. Malaki ang pagkakaiba ng karakter. Hindi ho pareho. Napakalaki ng pagkakaiba. Now, may I say it this way. How would you feel if you were a child of a billionaire Kung anak po kayo ng bilyonaryo, how would you feel? May pagkakaiba po ba sa anak na mahirap? Meron po ba o wala? Ay, meron, di ba? Meron pagkakaiba. Malaki ang pagkakaiba. Hindi lang po meron pagkakaiba. Malaki ang pagkakaiba. O, kinikwento ni Pacquiao ang kanyang buhay na siya mahirap pa. Tama? Siya po ay nagtitinda ng tinapay naglalako ng tinapay tuwing umaga. At ganyan niya, na pagkaming sa wala silang makain sa bahay, 
sapagkat anak lang siya ng mahirap. Ngayon po, siya ay bilyonaryo na. Manalo man siya o hindi, sa laban na rin may weather, meron siyang net income na 80 million dollars. Hindi mo kayang bilangin yun. Am I right? 80 million dollars. Nihinagap. Hindi naisip ni Pacquiao yun, nung bata pa siya. Eh. Nihinagap, hindi naisip nung nanay niya. Oo, nung kanyang pinanganak si Pacquiao. Alright, tanong. May pagkakaiba na po ba yung mga anak ni Pacquiao ngayon kaysa kay Pacquiao nung araw? Hindi lang po mayroong pagkakaiba. Malaki ang pagkakaiba. Hindi ba? Napakalaki ng pagkakaiba. Ano naman kaya kung ikaw ay anak ng hari? Anak ka ni Queen Elizabeth, for example. At nakatera ka sa Windsor Castle. Oho. Meron po ba kakaiba? Malaki ang pagkakaiba. Ano po? Alright. Ano po bang mas maganda at mas magaling? Anak ka ng hari o anak ka ng Diyos? O hindi. Walang pagkakaiba sa inyo sa iba eh. Ano ba ang pinakamaganda? Anak ka ng bilyonaryo o anak ka ng Diyos? Eh bakit yung mga anak ng Diyos, pareho ang buhay ng hindi anak ng Diyos? Kung mayroong pagkakaiba, tama ho ba ako? Bakit pareho ang buhay? Bakit pareho ang direksyon? Bakit pareho? See? Kaya ngayong bagong ito, ay gusto kong ipakita sa inyo, to me, sa aking sariling buhay, what does it mean to me to be a child of God. But first of all, atin muna sakutin yung unang-unang tanong na dapat malaman ng lahat. How can you be a child of God? Paano ka ba maaari maging anak ng Diyos? Paano ba? Lahat man ng tao ay anak ng Diyos? Hindi po. No, of course, pag pinag-uusapan po natin ang history ng human being, masasabi ninyo na all of us are God's children by creation. Di ba? Tayong lahat ay nanggaling sa Diyos. Tayong lahat ay nilalang ng Diyos. Kaya nga tayo ay mga anak ng Diyos by way of what? Creation. Nilalang tayo niyan, di ba? Pero doon sa creation ng Panginoon, may nangyari. Di ba? May nangyari. Ano po yung nangyari? Nagkasala po ang tao. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Si Adan sa kasi, ba? ay nagkasala. Sila hindi sumunod sa ating Panginoon. They violated God's command. They sin against God and they plunge the whole universe into sin. And because of this, all of us, the Bible says, are sinners. Am I right? Tayong lahat ay makasalanan. When nagpapasalamat tayo, Sapagkat hindi po tayo iniwan ng Diyos. Hindi po tayo pinabayaan ng Diyos. Am I right? Bumuha siya ng paraan. Paraan upang tayo ay i-reconcile niya sa kanyang sarili. Paraan upang ang makasalanan ay maging matuwid. Paraan upang ang makasalanan na ngayon ay anak ng Diablo ay maging anak ng Diyos. Nakalagay sa John 1.12. Ano nakalagay sa John 1.12? But as many as received Him, ang lahat ng tumanggap sa Kanya. Sino po yung Kanya? Si Kristo. Ang lahat ng nagsitanggap kay Kristo Jesus ay binigyan ng kapatang maging mga anak ng Diyos na lalaki. Bakit po sons of God? Sapagat isa lang po ang gender doon sa langit. The genders are all sons. Not female, but male. Kaya nga ang tawag, sons of God. Okay? Now, ang sabi rito sa atin sa John 1.12, ang tanging paraan upang ang tao ay maging anak ng Diyos 
ay hindi po sa kaparaanan na gusto ng tao. Hindi ba? Hindi po sa kaparaanan na magagawa niya. Hindi po sa kaparaanan na iniisip niya. Ang kaligtasan po'y inisip ng Diyos. Ang kaligtasan po ng tao ay pinlano ng Diyos. Ang kaligtasan po ng tao ay in-execute ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng pagpunta ni Kristo Yesus at sa kanyang kamatayan sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Malapit na po nating i-celebrate ang tinatawag nating mahal na araw kung saan ipinagdiriwang ng buong bansa ang pagating ng Panginoon dito sa lupa. Ang kanyang kamatayan doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Ang pagkakamali lamang, daan mga Pilipino ang ginagaya ang ginawa ni Kristo. Hindi ba? Sila rin ay nagpapapalo. Sila rin ay lumalakad. Na parang lumalakad sa kalbaryo. Sila rin po ay nagpapako sa krus. Hindi po sinabi ng Panginoon yun. Hindi niya pinapagawa sa atin yun. Hindi ba? Ang kinakailangan lamang gawin ay aminin natin tayo makasalanan at wala tayong magagawa sa ating sarili. Tama ba ako? Aminin po natin na tayo makasalanan. Aminin po natin na wala tayong magagawa sa ating sarili. Aminin po natin na kahit anuman ang gawin natin, kahit anuman ang isipin natin, hindi tayo makakasundo ng ating Panginoon. At ang tanging paraan ay ang magsisi tayo ng ating mga kasalanan at tanggapin si Kristo Yesus sa ating puso na ating Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Manampalataya sa Kanya. Ayon sa Kanyang salita. Even faith has is quite different to what man believes in. Ang pananampalataya po ng maraming Pilipino ay hindi nababatay ang salita ng Diyos. Hindi ba? Tanungin nyo ang sampung Pilipino kung ilan sa kanila ang nagbabasa ng Bible. Baka wala pang siyam. Tama ho ba ako? Bakit? Sapagkat ang pananampalataya ng Pilipino ay nababatay sa kanyang relihiyon. Ang pananampalataya ng Pilipino ay nababatay sa kanyang tradisyon. Ang pananampalataya ng Pilipino ay nababatay sa kanyang mga gawa. Hindi po yun ang tunay na pananampalataya. Ang tunay na pananampalataya ay nababatay sa kanyang salita. Ngayong umagang ito, wala kayong marunig, kundi ang salita ng Diyos. At ang sabi ng Biblia, ang pananampalataya ay nakukuha sa pagkikinig ng salita ng Diyos. Alright? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Kaya nga, kinakailangan po i-qualify natin ang pananampalataya. Bakit? Kasi lahat may pananampalataya daw eh. Di ba? Lahat may pananampalataya. Ang tanong nga ito, saan mo binabatay ang pananampalataya mo? See? It must only be in the Word of God. Ngayong umaga, narinig nyo ang salita ng Diyos. Ngayong umaga, Sinabi ng salita ng Diyos na ang tanging paraan upang ang tao ay maging anak niya ay tanggapin si Kristo Yesus sa kanyang buhay. Sinabi po ng salita ng Diyos na ang tanging paraan upang ang tao ay maging anak niya ay manampalataya sa kanya. Ulitin mo yung John 1.12. Ano nakalagay doon? Di ba? Even to them that what? Believe on His name. Hindi po yung sumasampalataya sa tradisyon, hindi yung sumasampalataya sa relihiyon, hindi yung sumasampalataya sa mga gawa, kundi sumasampalataya sa kanyang pangalan. Kaya nga nakalagay dun sa Romans chapter 10 verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right? Ngayon ang mga Pilipino, pwede niyang sabihin na meron siyang pananampalataya. 
Pero pag hindi niya pwedeng sabihin na siya ay save, at hindi niya nauunawaan ang ibig sabihin ng save, ibig sabihin, wala po siyang pananampalataya. Tinan mo ulit yung verse. Alright? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Save. Sa ating po mga bisita, nauunawaan po ba natin ang salitang saved? Okay? Pwede mong sabihin, may pananampalataya ako, pero hindi ko nauunawaan ang salitang save. Ang ibig sabihin nun, wala kang pananampalataya. Alright? Sa so, pagkakas sabi ng Bible, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Nakalagay sa John chapter 3 and verse number 7. Inulit-ulit ng ating Panginoon, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Alright? Ano po ang sinabi ng ating Panginoon? Huwag kayong magulat na sinasabi ko sa iyo, huwag kang magtaka na sinasabi ko sa iyo na dapat kang ipanganak na muli. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng born again. Ipanganak na muli. Marami mga taong nagsasabi na sila ay born again. Hindi ba? Pero kahit sabihin mong born again ka, pero kung hindi mo nauunawa ng ibig sabihin ng saved, hindi ka born again. Kahit sabihin mong born again ka, pero hindi ka nakakatiyak ng papatunguhan mo pa ikaw namatay, hindi ka born again. Kahit na ganong karaming hallelujah ang banggitin mo, kahit gano'ng karaming praise the Lord pa yan, kahit gano'ng karaming amen pa yan, hindi nakukuha sa maraming salita ng ganon ang pagiging born again. Alright? Ang sabi ng Bible, you can, only, you can only be born again by the Spirit of God. Kaya ngayong umaga, bago ko ipagpatuloy ito mensaheng ito, sana ay maunawaan po ninyo, paano ba ako magiging anak ng Diyos? At sana, pag ako po yung nag rito mamaya, ang sino man tao na gustong tunay na maging anak ng Diyos, sana lumapit ka. Amen po ba? At tanggapin mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. Tunay mong tanggapin. Hindi kasama relihiyon, hindi kasama ang tradisyon. Ibig sabihin, willing kang taliktad mo yung relihiyon mo, willing kang ikaw ay tumalikod sa yung tradisyon, willing kang ikaw ay tumalikod sa paniniwala mo, at aharap ka sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, magsisisi ng lahat ng iyong kasalanan at tatanggapin siya sa iyong puso na iyong Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Anong sabi ni John 1.12? But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. And you can be born again. You can be a child of God. Now to me, what does it mean to be a child of God? First of all, it means that I am, that I am the most blessed person on earth. Being a child of God means to me that I am the most blessed person on earth. I might not be feeling well, but my being blessed does not depend on my feeling bad or my feeling well. My faith does not depend on my feelings. My faith depends on the Word of God. My faith does not depend upon my status in life. My faith depends on the Word of God. I might not be rich. I might be in need. I might be poor. I might be sick. I might experience a lot of afflictions. Yet knowing that I'm a child of God, it makes me the most blessed person on earth. Do you feel that way? Do you know it? Alright. Secondly, to be a child of God means to me to be the most privileged person among everybody. I am not only blessed, I'm privileged. Just imagine the privileges to be a child of God, isn't it? 
To know you're a child of God. Not just to feel. Not just to feel, but to know you're a child of God does not only make you the most blessed person on earth, but it makes you the most privileged person. The most privileged person. To me, to be a child of God means that I'm always on the top of the world. I am always on the top of the world. Remember the song of Karen Carpenter, Top of the World? What does she mean when she sings the song? Huh? What does she mean? If you're in love with somebody, I'm on the top of the world, isn't it? If you're okay, you're on top of the world. If you're successful, you are on the top of the world. Let me make it different right, uh, right now to you. A lot of people can be successful. And a person can be so much in love. It does not mean he is on the top of the world. To me, to be a child of God means I am on the top of the world. Fourthly, to be a child of God makes me to be proud of my Heavenly Father. Proud of my Heavenly Father. And everything that He stands for, it means this. If I'm a child of God, I will always speak about my Heavenly Father. Because I'm proud of Him. Am I right? Everywhere I go, anywhere you go, Okay? Because you're a child of God, you will not be ashamed to talk about your Heavenly Father. You always speak about Him. You always tell others about Him. Am I right? Okay? Because you are a child of God. You'll be proud of your Heavenly Father. You will speak of Him every day. That's why we believe in soul winning. We believe in telling people about Christ. And you know what? To a real believer in Christ, it is never an obligation to tell others about Jesus Christ. Come on now, listen to me. Never an obligation. If you think you're obligated, quit winning souls and quit being saved. It's a shame for anyone to declare, I'm a child of God. You do not even tell others of Jesus Christ. Am I right? Because if you're a child of God, you'll be proud of your Heavenly Father. I mean, you, if you're proud of your Father, you won't be ashamed to speak about Him. Am I right? If you're proud of your parents, idadadal mo yung magulang mo araw-araw sa iba. And you can speak God of Him. Ganun din po, kung talaga anak ka ng Diyos, at proud ka sa Heavenly Father mo, araw-araw, ipagmamalaki mo ang Heavenly Father mo sa iba. Araw-araw. Ay, nakakalungkot. Wala pa yata 10% ng mga anak ng Diyos na binabanggit ang Panginoon sa iba. Pero alam nyo, ang galing natin magpray. Hindi po ba? To be a child of God makes me to always thank God for His grace. Ang buhay po natin sa mundong ito is always by grace. Not by what we do, not by what we accomplish, not by what we have, not by what we work for, not by what we get. The life of a believer in Christ is always lived by the grace of God. And because of this, if you're a child of God, you will always thank God for His grace. To be a child of God, to me, makes me to realize 
that I have the right to call him father. I have all the right to call him what? Father. How can you call the Lord your father if you are not sure you're a child of God? Diba? You have no right to call God your father if you are not sure you're a child of God. That's why my advice to you is, be a child of God first. In Romans chapter 8, and verse number 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry what? Abba, Father. I have the right to call him Father. To be a child of God also means it makes me to realize that I have full access to His throne of grace. I have full access to His throne of grace in Christ. In the book of Hebrews, you know, we find in the book of Hebrews how the Bible says, we are even commanded to what? To approach the throne of grace boldly. Am I right? Sino lang ang binigyan ng karapatan noon? Oh, Not to approach God's throne boldly. Only those who are God's children. Only those who are saved have all the right and the authority to approach God's throne boldly when we are in need. And we're going to find grace in times of need. Alright? We're going to find grace in times of need. According to the book of Hebrews. Where is that in the book of Hebrews? Let's go there. Hebrews chapter 4, I think it is. Isn't it right? Huh? The throne of grace. Huh? Hebrews... Chapter 4 and verse number 15. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, 9 out of 10 Filipinos pray, isn't it? They pray to the God they know. But do you know? That only those who are truly God's children have the right to approach God in prayer. And Hebrews 4.16 is the verse that gives God's children the authority to do so. Let us therefore come boldly. God is telling us. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. The throne of the grace of God. The throne of your heavenly Father. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now you can cry to the Heavenly Father. I mean you can talk to Him like a small child can talk to his dad. Do you realize that? I mean you can tell, tell the Heavenly Father everything. I mean you can weep before God's Heavenly Father. I mean God understands everything that is in your own heart. Even the things you cannot pray anymore. God still understands that. That is how good the Heavenly Father is. Because you are a child of God. Alright? To be a child of God makes me also to realize that I am an heir of God and joint heir with Jesus Christ. Tagapagmana po ako ng Diyos. At kasamang tagapagmana ni Kristo. Open to Romans chapter 8. And in verse numbers uh, 16, the Spirit Himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, what? Then heirs. Heirs. Kung hindi po mayaman ang Panginoon natin, wala kang mana, correct? 
Eh, hindi po eh. Napakayaman ng Panginoon natin eh. Nainiwala ba kayo ron? Siya nagbibigay ng kapangyarihan upang tayo ay magkaroon ng yaman, ng kayamanan. Siya ang nagpapala po sa atin. Siya ang nagbubukas ang pintuan ng langit para sa atin. Siya ang nagpupuno ng ating mga buhay na lahat ng mga pagpapala. Kinakailangan lamang na tayo bilang mga anak ay ano, sumunod sa Kanya. E ang problema, marami mga anak niya na hindi sumusunod sa Kanya. Am I right? Oo. So ang sabi ng Bible, ito, and if children, then heirs. Tayo po ay tagapagmana ng Diyos dahil tayo ay mga anak ng Diyos. Si Pacquiao, pag nag-retire yan, at pag nawala na yan sa mundong ito, sino ang tagapagmana ng kayamanan niya? Mga anak niya. Hindi ba? Hindi na ho kinakailangan pa maging buksingero mga anak niya para maging tagapagmana ni Pacquiao. Am I right? Oo. Oh. Sapagkat yung tatay na ang tumanggap na lahat ng suntok. Yun na lang anak nila ang natanggap na lahat ng yaman. Napakapalad ng mga alak ni Pacquiao. Correct? Alam niyo po ba, in the same token, upang tayo maging tagapagmana, si Kristo ang tumanggap na lahat ng suntok, hindi tayo? Si Kristo ang tumanggap na lahat ng hirap, hindi tayo? Si Kristo ang tumanggap na lahat ng affliction, hindi tayo? Upang tayo ay maging tagapagmana. Hmm? Heirs of God. Hindi lang heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ. Pero alam nyo, may qualification po yung joint heirs with Christ. Eh. Ako hanggang ngayon, hindi ko pa masyadong maintindihan ang ibig sabihin ng joint heirs with Christ. Eh. Pero meron pong qualification to. Eh. Ano pong qualification? If so be that we suffer with Him. If so be that we suffer with Him. Kanina, may kausap ako. Kanina. Dito siya, nakikinig. Sabi ko sa kanya, I guess you're busy with work, isn't it? Yes. And you can only attend on Sunday morning. You cannot even attend sometimes. You cannot attend. Pastor, I'm tired already. Now listen. To worship God is never easy. If you want to make it easy, then go and live your life. I'd like you to know this. If serving God is not easy, then to live a wicked life is hard. Sabi ng Bible eh, the way of the wicked is what? Hard. And some people don't even realize that? Then do it. To realize it. But just to let you know, the life of a the life of a godly man, the life of a believer is never hard. But it is never easy. Do you know why the life of the wicked is hard? Because he has no God to speak of. Do you realize that? Do you know why the life of the wicked is hard? Because he has no God that promised him, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's why the life of the wicked is hard. But the life of a believer, it may not be easy, but the Bible says, I am always there for you. I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. If you're in trouble, just talk to me, just call on me, and I will be there. That's the benefit and the privilege of a child of God. And many God's children don't even know about it. And so many of God's children walk falsely. Many of us walk hypocritically. Many of us don't walk in reality with Jesus Christ. Join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also, that we may be also glorified together. To me, 
That is what it means to be a child of God. It means that I am the most blessed person on earth. It means that I am the most privileged person among everybody. It means that I am on top of the world. It means that I am proud of my heavenly Father. It means that I can always thank God for His grace. It means that I realize that I have the right to call Him Father. I realize I have full access to His throne. I realize I'm an heir of God and joint heir with Jesus Christ. You know, problems can be overcome if you're a child of God. There is no trial so great. No afflictions too hard to bear. Too big to overcome. Why? Because I am a child of God. We might be paupers. Now, compared to those who are rich in this world, we might be poor now compared to those that are so wealthy. But one day we'll be princes in his kingdom. The Heavenly Father is the most sweet, loving, affectionate, an understanding father in the whole universe. God has never become a disappointment to me. How about you? But you know what? I am many times a disappointment to him. How about you? In Matthew chapter 6, beginning verse number 24, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. We shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into a stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was at the rate like one of this. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all those things do the Gentiles seek. And the word Gentile means they're not God's children. For your heavenly Father, talking to His children, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. 
Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What kind of heavenly father do we have? In the book of Luke, chapter 11, and verse number 12. Let's read verse number 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if she, he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that asked him. Sinasabi po ng Panginoon natin, kung tayo ng mga ama, ng mga taong makasalanan, ay hindi bibigyan yung mga anak natin ng masama. Am I right? How much more ang Heavenly Father natin? Na ibinigay sa atin lahat ng mga pagpapala, ibinigay sa atin ng Holy Spirit, Ibinigay sa atin ng kanyang kaharian, pinangakuan tayo ng mansion sa langit, balang araw. What does it mean to be a child of God? To you, what does it mean? Is he real? Is it real to you? Totoo ba siya sa'yo? Is it true? Do you see Him by faith? Do you experience His blessings? What does it mean to you to be a child of God? Shall we stand? Every head be bowed, every eye be closed.